Hello and welcome to the, wow, we could do something about that. Echo, yeah. Okay, I'll try again. Can we do anything about that? Back in the back there? Is that Christian back there? Okay, we'll have to try to deal with it, I guess. Anyway, uh, welcome to the few who are here and anybody online to the meeting of the October 26th Winsbury Area School District Board of Directors. Uh, let's please stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, for all. Okay, we have everyone uh, except Mr. McDonald here, Ms. Kuzer, and he will not be joining us tonight. I know, but I, we, we, we're doing the best we can. Thank you. Um, okay, Dr. Klein, no uh, agenda changes? This. Go on. Okay. Okay, um, Dr. Klein, no agenda changes, correct? Okay, so do we have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? It's approved. Okay, we got Dr. Royer and second by Mrs. Sullivan. Or just Okay, uh, so we have a motion and a second. Do may have any questions? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. On to the minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Thank you. Uh, superintendent's report. All right. Just for, for good measure. Uh, to, to... Okay. Just to try and give you an update uh, to let you know, there have been some questions about when our video of our board meetings go up on the website. And actually, what we did was put a sign up on. Uh, we put uh, a notice up on the board uh, or on the website to say that we would have the uh, board meeting videos posted within 48 hours at the end of the board, from the end of the board. So, so that, and also just an update, we, uh, you know, our numbers have, were pretty good here with uh, COVID over the last couple of weeks, but we did have a spike at Hooverville. We've had, I think, five or six positives at Hooverville, uh, you know, so for whatever reason, but uh, the numbers did go up there this week, so just to kind of give you a heads up. And I think several of them are in one class, so uh, we don't know if they're, what's going on there, but we will be following it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, it's now time for public comment. Um, appreciate everybody who's here tonight. Um, going by the, the math school that we've had to uh, instill for adults coming on to any school property. Appreciate that. Uh, also public comment, I uh, got a few complaints because uh, mainly one person got a little personal with the names of people in the criticism. So if you could please refrain from doing that, uh, I would appreciate it, or we would appreciate it. So uh, anyone who would like to speak tonight, you still have our five minute rule. Uh, we will uh, give you five minutes and we will go the half hour. I would doubt with the people if we were gonna past that half hour. Um, it looks like really everybody wants to talk. I would consider that. Uh, please, when you come up, give your name and address and try to speak clearly so Mr. Kuzer can uh, be sure that we have that. Would anybody like to speak tonight for public comment? And yes, while you are speaking, if you would like to remove your mask. Thank you. Hello. Okay. I'm glad we can hear you back there. So. Um, I don't know. I have this written out, so I'm just going to read it. I'm, I'm sorry. Can we have your name and address? Oh, I'm please? sorry. Brenda Miller, 11247 Reinhardt Drive. 
Um, I have very strong opinions against wearing masks for many reasons. I've stood up here before and talked about the, the facial recognition for my kindergarten grandson, about the papers that were given out, about how important that is. I can't see any of your facial recognitions. My grandson can't see his teachers. That's my kindergarten grandson. So tonight I wanna to talk a little bit about my 11 year old grandson. So my biggest reason is the mental health aspect of the masking. That's the invisible dis disability, the one that no one can see. But the disability that I have that apparently there's not an adult visitor exemption request available. Thank you for answering me today, Mrs. Harold. She said she would speak to you and our lawyer to see if there's any such thing. I don't know how there can't be any such thing, but that's regardless. So when I first saw that masking was going to be required tonight, the first board meeting, I've been to the last three or four and masking was not required. My first thought was that I'm just going to watch the live session. No hassles. I don't have to have this feeling that I have right now and sit at home. But then my second thought was even though the live stream is somewhat of an accommodation to still be present, but not to have to wear a mask, it really does have the same impact and show of support for our children as showing up in person. And I'd like to thank you all because you've accomplished that because you can see how many parents walked away because they didn't want to kneel to this. And my daughter always says, mom, it's whatever hill you want to die on. And it might not be this mask hill, but it's what's coming next. And we all know what that is. So my third thought was how my 11 year old grandson must feel standing up for his rights every day by not wearing a mask. So I decided to come this evening and put myself in his shoes. I didn't know if I was gonna fight with the police officer. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but this is my hill and here's my mask. So my 11 year old grandson every day, not a mask. So on the one hand, he has the people that are the rule followers, which in the past has been not been a bad thing. I've been a rule follower and raised our children to be rule followers. You know, respect the authority, don't question the authority. Well, that's a thing of the past. On the other hand, I have those people that are openly standing up for those rights by not obeying the rules, quote unquote, and it feels good to have people on your side. But you know, those people are standing for their rights and they're not in here, but that's okay. Everybody's got to do it their way. Then there's the people that have a lot to lose if they don't follow the rules, such as their careers, their jobs, their paychecks. I have a lot of friends that are teachers. This has broken them and thus continues to break our system and our children. Then there's the fear factor that is hammered into us on a daily basis and our kids. I'm going to get sick. I'm going to make my grandma sick and she's going to die. I'm going to make my baby cousin sick. I'm going to make my dad sick. Then since I'm the type of person that doesn't like confrontation, I'm worried that I'm gonna get yelled at by a police officer or singled out or embarrassed. All of those thoughts are a lot for anyone to handle, let alone an 11 year old that has just started a new school, trying to make new friends, dealing with family issues at home and grieving loved ones that have been lost, not to COVID just because it was their time. I am an adult and like everyone else, I have my share of stories involving COVID and mandates and bullying, but I like to think that I'm past letting people, other people's opinion of me bother me too much. That, and I have the knowledge that we all have an expiration date, mask or no mask, shot or no shot. It's not in our control. With all that being said, I still need to give myself a talking to before I walk into anywhere without a mask. Always feeling like I'm on the defensive just waiting for someone to approach me, to bully me, tell me I'm selfish, tell me to leave, looking at me like I'm contagious. The judgment in the eye says it all. My question to the board is, why would you think that this is right to do this to our children? No matter which end of the mask and shot debate you are on, our children are having their childhoods taken from them and replaced with fear, uncertainty, moral confusion, anxiety, depression, the list goes on. The American Academy of Pediatrics and several other notable organizations just declared a national emergency in children's mental health. Governor Tom Wolf has stated that mass mandates won't go away until vaccines are made available for kids. 
when are we going to draw the line? I don't know what it's like in your house, but a lot of parents are in the muck of things, the mental health depression, chronically ill children and adults living with them, autism, aging parents. Do we really need to be doing this to our ch children and creating the next generation of this? Thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope you take this to heart more than you did the last time I spoke. Thank you. I'm going to try the mic again. That sounds better, right? Okay. Uh, anyone else like to speak tonight? Hi, my name is Janine McChesney. I'm at 505 Evangeline Drive. Thanks for allowing us the time tonight. Um, so, I mean, really, it's on everyone's mind because I just stood out there with parents who got turned away. Um, what was the difference from the last meeting to now um, as to why masks were all of a sudden required for parents because it wasn't enforced before? Uh, well, the answer to that is the last meeting when the when the um, uh, the exemption was required of the kids. Right. Uh, we should have enforced it then for adults. Uh, we got caught up in a meeting back there and we honestly didn't prep for it. So we didn't feel it was fair to make you do it when we didn't, right. you know, have any notification of it. But mm -hmm. this one was announced. Yep. And that's why I went yep. today. And okay. again, it's we believe that's the law. Yeah, that's why we're doing it. Thank yeah. you for your answer. I appreciate that. I mean, because I was on our minds out there why all of a sudden at previous meetings, it was not required for us to enter and come in. Um, another person mentioned about that there are drinks up here on the table, whereas we can't have one um, sitting back here in the seats. And they brought up what's the difference between the parent having one and you having one. Um, it seems a little hypocritical. Your opinion. What? That's your opinion. Yeah. Okay. I mean, is there an explanation for that, though? Like, uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about the rules, you know, at another time. I'm not sure. Right, I'm just saying we're trying to deal with the school. Right. If it's here. but if it spills, it spills either way. Right. Um, I think we're just pointing out the hypocrisy of a few things right now. Um, you know, so that's one of our, our biggest things is there's parents out there who wanted to come in and they want to advocate for their children. Um, if we're going to enforce the mask mandate. I'm not going to name names, but whenever we came in here, there were two school board members who had their masks pulled down um, and they were not speaking into a microphone. So again, with hypocrisy, um, where it's not the same for parents as it is for the school board members. So we would just appreciate that if it's going to be enforced upon us and our children, that it's enforced upon all of you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else tonight? Okay, if no one else would like to speak, we will move on to the uh, board initiatives. First item would be board reports. Does anybody have any board reports tonight? No committee meetings over the last week or so. Okay, uh, moving on then to the student rep and Riley's gonna take over today. Yeah, I'm not sure that's on. Here, here you go. I'll take it over. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just a wrap up on fall sports wrapping up this past week. Our volleyball team is mid pen champs. This is the back to back years. On Friday night, we had an exciting game winning touchdown drive on the last minute of the game with Lewis Lindsay throwing a Hail Mary to Brody Rhodes to get the game win in the end zone. Also, our field hockey team won on their senior night, five to two. And the club news, FBLA is getting ready for Kalahari, which is the first in-person co conference since COVID's been going on. So that's super excited. I know I'm a part of the FBLA and we're all excited and happily preparing. Other news is we are having a kindness day on November 12th. And then the e-hall pass is going to be enforced starting next week because of the vandalism. And we're hoping that that's going to stop. And does anybody have any issues with the use of the, the new pass? Is that going, is, the, um, is there a problem with that or? I don't know if there's like a problem. I know they just, I mean, the last time we did it was um, for me, it was in middle school. So just reteaching ourselves. And I know it's going to be an adjustment and people necessarily aren't excited for the adjustment. Um, and when it was in middle school, it wasn't a very effective plan, if that makes sense. So like, you would have to have the teacher let you go, but they had to start the pass and end the pass. So mm -hmm. 
um, I feel like if we have a more effective system this year, it'll be more easier and students will be more happy to adjust to. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to school business tonight. Personnel, Dr. Sterner. Huh? Thank you, Mrs. Harold. I'd like to direct your attention to the items listed under personnel. Uh, we have uh, appointment of professional personnel. Uh, well, I'm gonna start over here, I apologize. Uh, we have resignation of support staff, reassignment of professional staff, change of hours of support staff, appointments of support staff, additional appointments of support staff, appointments of extracurricular. In addition, we have resignation of support staff and additional appointment of support staff. And then on the agenda this evening, we have the appointment of three professional staff members um, as listed. Um, recommendation is to approve as noted. Motion. Move to approve. Second. Questions for Dr. Sterner, hi. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item. On to bus drivers, Mr. Holtzman. Mrs. Harold, I need them to turn the microphones on. Oh, when you talk, you have to turn your microphones. You think everybody can do it? They're okay, they're all good to go now, so we can all turn our mics back on. Okay, okay Mr. Holtzman, bus drivers. Thank you, ma'am. We have two drivers for your discussion and action. We're recommending approval. They've both met the requirements for background check. Motion to approve. Uh, Mr. Wanger and Thanks. Mrs. Zimmerman seconds. Okay. All right. Uh, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, contractor payments. Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, our uh, bus contractors, we have two primaries and then two non publics as well. And I have to tell you, they've done an exemplary job of being able to provide transportation this year. Uh, most districts can't really say that. There certainly has been a lot of issues with recruiting and retaining drivers. Uh, there's a lot of competition with uh, the district to the south of us uh, with benefits and with much higher salaries. So many of our contractors did have to adjust their salaries for this year to go ahead and keep and retain those staff. Um, very similar to what we did with our support staff, where we made a $2 an hour adjustment to them this year, if you remember. Mm -hmm. um, what we're recommending is doing the same thing, basically, for our bus contractors. Now, we don't pay those employees directly, but we know that those contractors, in many cases, have adjusted those salaries upward to go ahead and reflect um, the higher prices. So what we're recommending is a $2 an hour payment um, increase to the bus contractors. That's based on the number of hours that those employees would work, um, per, and that would include field trips as well as athletics. And this is, um, the request is only for one year. Um, eventually the formula for the state is an inflationary index formula, and it does catch up over time. So we wanna see what that number will be for next year. It has not been announced yet. So that could help kind of ameliorate some of those issues associated with the salaries by giving the contractors additional funds as well. Okay, motion. Move to approve. Second. Any questions for Mr. Holtzman? Yes, ma'am. We can use this because it's basically a need to provide transportation for our students. And again, our contractors have done a great job with that. So that is one of the qualified items. You're absolutely right. And in fact, we've heard of several districts where they could not even provide vans and such to bring all the students into the buildings. And so it's been certainly a, a monumental challenge with bus drivers this year, and not just in Pennsylvania, but across the country. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to senior class trip, Dr. Sterner Hines. Thank you, Mrs. Harold. Um, in the board docs, you have information regarding the senior class trip to Cedar Point. Um, you also have a copy of the itinerary. Um, on the particular agenda, it has two dates listed. They are going or scheduled to go May 20th and 21st. Recommendation is to approve as listed. Okay. Questions? And this is taking place, uh, they would miss one day of school, correct? Friday? That is correct. Okay, and be home Saturday night. And we don't know if they have like a minimum, right? 
Like, well, if you look at the agenda, it's suggesting the minimum is 50. So we're, oh, we're hopeful that, that we will have okay. at least 50 students okay. in attendance. Okay. Uh, okay, any other questions? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Applebee's. That's Mr. Holtzman. Uh, yes, ma'am, I can speak that? to that. Okay. Yeah, I know Mr. Eric's wrote today. Um, this is basically a replacement of the lease that you approved last time, last board meeting. Um, essentially what happened is that, if you remember, this was kind of a delayed type of uh, program that we were talking about replacing these devices. And that goes back maybe just a couple months. Well, in the meantime, since we received that formal quote, Apple has changed products. So they no longer offer the devices that we were anticipating getting. And unfortunately, like everything else, the new devices cost about $1,000 more per year. So this lease would replace the previous lease for that. This is for the music program that would start in the spring. Which we just looked at the last meeting, correct? Yes, ma'am, which okay. was approved at the okay. last meeting. But yep. we, we, we felt that we needed to come back to you because technically it's, it's actually an increase. Right. It's over the threshold of what we would have the board approve for okay. uh, a lease. Appreciate that. Sure. Uh, motion. Questions? You say it's thousand dollars more. Is that what you said? Uh, One thousand dollars more per year. Per, it's okay. a three-year lease, so three thousand okay. dollars. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Baker. How many? I believe it's seventeen. So Let me double one check. One. Correct. Yeah, this is the one for the uh, music program at the high school. Um, I hate to put Dr. McCallum on the spot in a meeting such as this, but she might have an idea. It might be even too early, possibly. Was it six, Dr. McCallum? We had six, six to nine for the second semester. Oh, there we go. Okay. That's, that's what you, I think Dr. you told us before. It was 12 or 13, right? Okay. Thank you, Dr. McCallum. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody need to wait to get that information before we vote? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Business items, Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am. For the board's discussion and action, we have cafeteria bills and general fund bills, as well as requisitions. And we also have some exonerations. Um, those are for property tax, occupation taxes. And then we have some property assessment changes. Those come from the Franklin County um, Tax Appeal Office. Um, some changed, some did not, based on the appeals office. Motion to approve the financials. Move to approve. Second. Questions for Mr. Holtzman? And you're correct, Ms. Bechtel. Um, there, probably for about a good three weeks, I'm just going into four weeks, we were having some certain some challenges with getting food. Um, I have to tell you that the food service department has just done a wonderful job. They have really and truly reached out. They've identified some new vendors and uh, to go ahead and bring in place. Um, at this point, uh, I was talking to Ms. Hellman even today, and there's no issues right now with food availability. Now, sometimes the selection isn't exactly what we would like to prefer, but uh, the availability is certainly significantly better. And I, again, they have done a phenomenal job. Um, one item, too, is it's amazing how much they've been able to take advantage of government commodities, especially with canned vegetables and fruits. Um, so they've reached out to those, and uh, some districts have not taken those items, and we certainly are filling up a warehouse. So. And by the way, I would like to mention in our conversation today, Ms. Hellman was very appreciative of the additional freezer space that we put on the back of the high school. She says that has been invaluable, taking very large loads of items that become available and putting them in there. So. If you remember, we put that in place to kind of replace cold storage. Well, that's just really become a bonus. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? We had a motion, right? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Clayton County comments, Dr. Klein or aye. anybody else? Want to Dr. I was just going to follow up. Dr. McCallum um, did get back to us, and there are 16 students registered for that class in the spring Good. semester. Okay. Board member comments. No? Okay. Now it's time for the second public comment. If anyone would like to speak, um, now's your time. Come on up, please. Elena Kehoe, 16 Eastland Circle. 
I just really want to thank the board for hanging in in a really tough time with a lot of toxicity and hostility towards you for trying to do the best for our kids, keep them safe, keep your staff safe, following the guidelines that are given to us by the public health officials and uh, dealing with the best we can in a very difficult time. So thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, if not, then uh, we're going to, are we going to the executive session? Okay, okay, all right, then we'll just be adjourning the meeting. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation, everybody who showed up in here today. <laughs>